Support for this podcast comes from the law firm of Davis Malm. Whether you're a developer, property owner, manager, or commercial tenant, their real estate attorneys know the lay of the land, not just the law. Learn more at davismalm.com. Support for this podcast comes from Boston University's Questrom School of Business, presenting the Is Business Broken podcast, featuring conversations about the role of business, stakeholder relations, and government at bu.edu slash questrom or wherever podcasts are available. WBUR Podcasts, Boston. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We got a special one here today. Franny Monahan, producer of The Common. Look at you behind the mic. Welcome to the guest seat. (laughs) I know, it's like I'm always on The Common. Welcome, welcome, welcome. (laughs) Thank you very much. So, what brings you here today? Well, Daryl. As you know, we've been doing these Field Guide to Boston episodes for a while, so I've got another one for you here. So for those who might not know, Field Guide to Boston is a station-wide effort by WBUR to highlight the many neighborhoods of the city and cover them in ways we haven't before. And today's episode is actually taking us to two different places, Boston Chinatown and Quincy, Massachusetts. Okay, so why Quincy? So, yeah, Quincy is not technically part of Boston, but, you know, we wanted to highlight a few of the regions nearby cities as well, you know, commuter cities, places like that. And I was just really eager to talk about the relationship between Quincy and Boston Chinatown. Uh, These places are very closely linked due to the movement of our region's Asian communities from Chinatown to Quincy due to rising housing prices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Sounds like there's a lot there. Mm -hmm. Where should we start? All right. So to get us started, I spoke with this woman named Joyce Chan for this piece, and I felt like her story really illustrated this move to me. Joyce is a former Charlestown high school teacher where she was a bilingual teacher. Um, She's a former bakery owner and is also the mother of Lawrence Louie, who you might know from Quincy's Rubato, which is a Hong Kong style cafe and 2024 James Beard finalist. Shout out to Rubato. Yeah. And she's a rock star, really. Oh, tell me more. So this is kind of going back in time a little bit. But Joyce told me that her family was pretty poor when she was growing up in Mm. Hong Kong. Um, She lived in an apartment with five different families. And while she didn't have a lot to herself, she remembers always loving music. I have no toys. I have no games to play. But the only thing I had at that time is radio, all kind of music, like Beatles and like uh, Elvis. All the songs impressed me so much. Yeah, I I remember the words, too. (laughs) So much. And I say this because I recently met up with Joyce and her band, Contempo, in the basement of Rubato, which is where they rehearse. They were getting ready for a show they had coming up. I like the drums. I know, yeah. sounds cool. They rocked. It was great. But anyway, you'll learn more about that band in a second because I am going to let Joyce tell us the rest of her story, starting right after she moved to Boston when she was 20 years old. I didn't want to go to to work right away. I I, I want to go to college like a normal kid. And then I worked two years in uh, different places, uh, sales girls, uh, office clerk, and then uh, restaurant uh, waitress, uh, save enough money, and then I went to UMass to continue my education. When I live in Back Bay by the Berkeley College, I watch the students. They all have instrument. And uh, at night time, I, I could hear them playing all the music, and I really like it. I admire them. And then more than that, I'm jealous of them. <laughs> so after I graduate, I'm lucky to get a job as a bilingual teacher at Charlestown High School. At that time, it's the 80s already. So many immigrants came from Vietnam. 
from China. They knew nothing about United States. They knew no English. So they hired me to help them. I learned that there's some music classes offered in Chinatown. So I start to learn guitar from them. They offer classes in a, in a social service uh, office, Chinese Progress Association. After classes, I stay there in the, in the office and then play guitar. That's how I met some friends. They like music too. We get together with some other friends. I mean, all the music lovers together and then start a band called Temple. A lot of my students, they had nowhere to go after school. They just hang out the street. Their parents all working in restaurants. So I felt like maybe I can offer them a place. I can teach them music, although I don't know much. I rent an office space in Chinatown, Leland Street. And at that time, only 450. And make a band room. So many students came, like 30 students came to, to, to my classes. But later, they raised up the rent to 700. And then later to 1,000. That uh, the drummer, he was a baker in Chinatown. He got laid off. He's looking for a job. Then another friend who lived in Quincy, one day he came to me and said, hey, uh, there's a bakery closed. It's for sale. And they, they would sell it cheap. So I went to look, went to see the place. And then I look around. Wow, a huge basement. <laughs> I can use as a classroom. And then my drummer can start business upstairs. It's good for everybody. When I start a bakery, I used the name of the band, Contempo. <laughs> so I kept the name. Because when I start a bakery, I have no money to renovate the place. And then my band member all soon came. They helped me to do the painting, helped me do the floor. Everybody help. And one of the students became my cashier. <laughs> they came to help to do part-time. In North Quincy, I think the store, there were only two Chinese restaurants. And they all chop suey restaurants. You know what chop suey restaurant, right? Not the authentic real Chinese food or Chinese bakery. There's uh, not many Chinese live around here. They start to move at the same time, to move in Quincy. Because the rent in Chinatown is getting so high. And then we start to start to have more social service here. So more Chinese start to move in here. Because they get Chinese food, they get all the service here, the rent are cheaper here. Everybody like Quincy. Oh my son really he because uh, maybe he grew up in the in the environment, in the in the bakeries. At first, I didn't like him to work in restaurant. I want him to be a teacher like me, follow my footsteps. But later, one day he said, Mom, I like cooking. <laughs> I like cooking more. To an immigrant, we, we just work so hard, just try to make the kid to get good education. We try to make the kids to leave the restaurant, but he liked it. At first, uh, okay, he went to England, he stayed there. And I thought he, he, he wouldn't come back at all. And then it's COVID. I was old, I'm getting old. It's time to retire. And then I have dream too. I want my son to come back to run the restaurant because this is my place. So I call up my son. He said right away, yes, I come back. I said, what? <laughs> Gave the whole business to him. That's how it started. And then I get my, my band come back after COVID. We start all over again. The same group, the same students, the same friends have been with me for 30 years. I keep saying I'm lucky, I'm happy. I'm so proud of everything here. Yeah. I have nice kids, I have nice friends, nice uh, people in Quincy too. Just like in a, a village. <laughs> Quincy to me is like a, this is my place. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back. 
Did you kill Marlene Johnson? I think you're one of the first people to have actually asked. From WBUR and ZSP Media, this is Beyond All Repair, a new podcast about an unsolved murder that will leave you questioning everything. Somebody should be in jail for murdering my sister. A woman who's never been believed. As long as they think I have done this, then they're not looking for who actually did this. And that's what makes it a cold case. No, it's a botched case. And a search for the truth, once and for all. Wow, it just gets more interesting. Beyond All Repair. Listen and follow wherever you get your podcasts. Be careful. You're digging in a place that's been very peaceful for a while. Do it anyway. Dig. And we're back with Franny Monahan, producer for The Common. All right, so we just heard Quincy's Joyce Chan talk to us about her journey from Boston's Chinatown to Quincy. So, Franny, tell us more about the move from Boston's Chinatown to Quincy that Joyce's story just illustrated for us. Yeah, so, uh, Daryl. As we know, Chinatown has seen a lot of development in the last few decades. Um, And like Joyce, a lot of people have been priced out. Tale as old as time. Um, So they started to look for other places to land that wouldn't take them too far away from Chinatown, though, because it's still a really important center for the community. I reached out to the Boston Chinatown Neighborhood Center, or BCNC, which also has an office in Quincy. And I wanted to get a clearer picture of how the population has changed over time in Chinatown. Um, And here is what BCNC CEO Ben Hires told me. Chinatown has historically been the the center of, you know, Asian and Chinese immigration to the greater Boston region, you know, going back to uh, the 19th century. And so, you know, more recently over time, when you look at the census data, the Boston, Chinatown, and sort of the city of Boston's uh, Asian population has decreased. Hmm. Did you learn anything about why Quincy is such a popular destination for these folks? Yeah, actually. Um, Ben said that this migration pattern is really traceable along our public transportation lines. So you see uh, the city of Malden has a really high percentage, 27% um, in the most recent census of Asian immigrants. Um, along the orange line. And then, you know, along the red line down to Quincy and the Braintree, um, you know, Quincy has now almost 30 percent of the the community um, that identify as Asian. And also, like Joyce alluded to, this effect kind of snowballed over time. So when people started moving, so did their businesses and the social services that they needed. So that's why BCNC now has a Quincy office and also why the city has such an amazing selection of Asian-owned businesses and restaurants today. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and just to clarify, the data, the, the numbers that Ben just shared with us, those numbers include folks outside of the Chinese community as well, right? Yeah, yeah. So that includes people from all kinds of heritages, Vietnamese, Filipino, Indian, but the Chinese population is by far the largest as of now. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I found really interesting while reporting this story, I heard multiple times that the Chinese community itself in Quincy is continuing to evolve, including Mm -hmm. more people from different regions and cultures that make up the Chinese identity. While the folks who came earlier on were more commonly from southern China, like Joyce. Recently, Quincy has seen a big influx of people from the northern regions of China, for instance. And I also talked to Bartholomew J. He serves on the board of BCNC, and he's been a lifelong Quincy resident. He moved there, I think he told me, when he was 10 from China with his family. And he says that that change is really reflected in the businesses popping up around the city, particularly in food. He says uh, there's a lot more, like, spicy northern cuisine now, whereas it used to be very Cantonese-focused. But here he is. For someone who doesn't understand the differences and how big and vastly different the Chinese people are from one another by region, that they don't realize that those changes are happening. But, you know, we start with one supermarket and then another, and now there's four or five supermarkets, which then becomes an anchor, just like Chinatown used to be an anchor for me and my parents. 
Well, it sounds like Boston's loss is Quincy's gain at the end of the day. Truly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Franny, thank you so much for going out and reporting this story and coming back and bringing it to us and talking about it. It's so nice to, to talk to you. Uh, I know. Because, know? of course, we never talk as I coworkers. Know. We I just, know. You know. <laughs> like, I mean, like, in this way, I mean, of course we talk. But I mean, no, I'm you know, joking. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> we should do this more. <laughs> yes, we should. I agree. Thank you, Daryl. And so with that. Should we do this together? Let's do it. You ready? All right. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening to The Common. If you want to get in touch with us, maybe send us your own recommendations for the city of Quincy. Hit us up on Instagram at WBUR The Common or send us an email at thecommon at WBUR.org. I'm Daryl C. Murphy. And I'm Franny Monahan. And we'll talk to you, or I'll talk to you, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>